The reality is that throughout the years of doing SEO, I can tell you from personal experience, a link building is a lot more important as a ranking factor for a local business, a online business, offline business, than Google cares to admit. For that reason, here's your ultimate guide on link building on how we build thousands of links a year for all of our clients. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to a local SEO unlocked podcast. My name is Christian hustle and it's a pleasure to have you here. If this is the first video that you see in this channel, we help hustlers out there build their business with local search marketing. So if it's something that you're pursuing, you're trying to grow your business, whatever that may be online or offline, consider following, join the channel as we have tons of content coming up. And in this specific case, we're digging deep into link building. So this is gonna be a pretty extensive video. Hopefully you stay with me. Um, drop it in the comments if you want me to segment different pieces or sections of this video into smaller videos just for easy consumption. But for now, the plan is to go into a full guide on link building and how to collect backlinks for your website for your online authority and online visibility. So let's start with there. What is link building? Link building is the practice of going out there and collecting or acquiring links or mentions in other websites. Now, throughout the years, you know, back when I started SEO, it was as easy as going online to a marketplace and buying a thousand links for $5 and you would immediately rank number one. Nowadays, Google is a lot smarter than that. I actually do not recommend buying links from link farms or public networks called PVNs. Honestly, if you follow this guide, you will be 100% safe. This is the exact same process we have been doing with our clients to collect, to acquire links, gain authority, and help them rank higher. We have survived every single Google algorithm update, and if anything, every update has helped these clients climb higher. So for us, it's proven to be safe. It is white hat. This is no way of hacking. This is not a rank fast method this is the correct way of approaching link building especially if you want to keep it safe and you don't want to risk anything with a future google update now in my experience link building is a much stronger ranking factor than google cares to admit in my mind i think it's because google doesn't want people to start abusing it again that was the reason why we had so many updates many years ago because people were abusing it quality was not there, a lot of spam going on. So Google got smarter on how they analyze these backlinks to a website, how to really attribute authority to them because not every link is considered into Google's eyes. They don't have the same weight of authority to pass on to you. For example, a, a link that is on a newspaper versus a link that is in a very authoritative website that is in your industry that is considered that go to for resources in your industry is going to have a lot more power than the mention on the newspaper, right? So that's what we're talking about today. And I'm actually going to share with you the exact process that my team follows to build links for our clients. And we're going to go deeper into each of the steps. That's why this is going to be a lengthy video, but stay with me. I trust that at the end of this video, either you're going to be a master, a pro, you're going to be ready to start building links or you're gonna really know how extensive this process really is, and you're gonna wanna reach out for help. Either way, let's jump into it. All right, so we're gonna start here with our SOP, our standard operating procedure for link building. Again, this is the exact same process that my team uses. So I am sharing the legitimate same document that we use. So the objective of this document is just to help you execute a successful link building campaign through various link acquisition strategies, including guest posts, link mentions, guest graphics, and resource links, while focusing on niche-based websites. We want these links to be captured within your industry. So let's say that you have a, you're running a law firm and you're doing SEO for a law firm. We need these links to be in the legal space. We need them to come from legal websites, legal blogs, whether they are high authority, you know, industry publications, or these are just other legal related blogs that maybe they're not competitors, but they have a lot of 
different legal content. These are gonna work a lot better than just going after generic blogs that have all kinds of sorts of industries in their content. So here niche specific, industry specific is going to play along really, really nice long-term with your link building strategy versus just going over tons of different you know, generic links. In link building, personally, I think quality over quantity. I take one link over a hundred cheap ones. Now these are some of the most common link types we typically build for our clients. There are a lot more link types. There's a lot of other strategies. I mean, these are not just the only ones, right? Like, there's also a lot of different names for these strategies. I'm not getting fancy here. I'm just giving it to you straight, what they are, what we do. Uh, but again, if you hear it from a guru out there, I'm sure they have some fancy or catchy names attached which we're not doing here, right? We're keeping it straight to the point. Hopefully that helps clarify it a little bit, this, this, these link types. So guest post is really what it sounds like. It's just creating and placing high quality content on third party websites. So it's just publishing a blog article on another website with the exchange that there is a mention, there's a link to our website. Link mentions is really inserting a link into an already existing article on another website. This is one of my favorites because that article is already existent. It's already indexed by Google. It's already probably somewhere in search results. And we're just going out there and adding a link to us. So great way to acquire a link. Also save resources by not having to write an article, something that is already built and proven on that website. The next one is guest graphics is really securing links by sharing infographic style content that you're letting other websites use as a resource. Let's say that you run a very successful massage therapy business and you created an infographic with what are the most common, you know, points on your body that you press to relax certain areas or help your patients relax in a different way. So you create this beautiful infographic and then you start reaching out to websites and let them know that you have this type of content and you're willing to let them use it in exchange for a link. Simple as straightforward as that. The last example on our list is gonna be resource links. So this is really gaining backlinks from curated lists of industry resources. Let's say that you run a moving company and you start reaching out to websites that are about real estate, real estate investing, realtors, and they have a resources page of all the companies that the realtor recommends, provides, or they know personally in some way, shape, or form. But this is a resource for the customer, right? For their end customer. So you reach out and you say, hey, you know, I'm local here in the market. I would love it if you could add me to your resources, right? Like we're, we're just neighbors, we're down the street. Um, and this is why I think you should do it because we can help your customers move into their new beautiful home, et cetera, et cetera, and, and acquire the link that way. Now, I know I mentioned in the beginning that we really want to capture those industry specifics, but in resources, you might struggle a little bit more to find those industry specific resource links. Although I would recommend to give it a, give it a try, right? Hopefully you do find them and hopefully maybe my example wasn't that great, but that's really the purpose of it, right? Let's keep going. So step one, database creation. Step one is going to be, I mean, the entire link building process is, is very manual, is long, is tedious, very repetitive. Uh, so if you, as you go through this, if you need help, just reach out, me and my team, we can take care of you, we can build these links for you. But basically the database creation is going out there and finding who are those websites that I could potentially place a link on a guest blog post or that I could just add a link on an existing blog post or even share my beautiful infographic. So this database is really gonna be a place where I'm gonna collect all the websites, what industry they're in. I highly recommend you focus on domain authority. I have another video on that and check it out if you wanna learn more about domain authority and metrics on how we collect, you know, what do we look for when we're building links, including spam score and things like that. But you definitely wanna have all of these into a spreadsheet. And also we need the email address. Where do we reach out to these website owners or website managers so that we can try to collect that link and we try to collect that content collaboration. So that's really what the spreadsheet is gonna look like. So how do we build this spreadsheet? Where do we even begin, right? So there's a few tactics that we use 
um, including a free one and a paid one. So let's start with a free one. The free one is as simple as going into Google and there's a few things that you can search for in order for you to find opportunities for content. So let's say that you are running a beauty salon. So you're gonna type into Google beauty salon and you're going to also add open quote, write for us, closing quote. So that means it's gonna say beauty salon, write for us. Now, the quotes are very important. The quotes surrounding write for us means and is telling Google that we need websites who have those three words in the identical order in their website. So that's really what is going to make this work. That means that we can exchange beauty salon for any vertical, whether that is law firm and then write for us in quotation marks. We can do plumbing and then write for us. We can do any vertical as long as we're saying, you know, write for us. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go with plumbing, write for us, hit enter, and you're gonna start seeing a bunch of different websites that are going to mention and talk about plumbing industry and that allow guest blocks to happen. Now, this is the easiest way to find these websites, right? Because now we have hundreds on search results that are handyman related, you know, directories, LinkedIn, another other plumbers, bunch of different types of websites that are allowing plumbers to come write guest blocks, right? Now it's gonna be very tedious to click on each of these, go through them, find their contact email, and figure out if they are the right fit for you. But this is all the information that you're gonna enter into a spreadsheet. Now, this is the freeway. So the freeway always requires more labor intensive, more hours of work versus using a paid tool like Busstream. So Busstream is literally a tool that can help you with your link building campaign. So it's as easy as entering the keywords, the verticals that you're looking for and running and starting a campaign. So what Busstream is going to do is gonna go out there, collect all the websites that are related to the keywords that we entered and is going to then show me not just what the website is about, but it's actually going to show me domain authority. It's gonna show me metrics about the website. And it's also going to give me the email contact of, a, of the website, right? So of the webmaster. So this is gonna make it really, really easy for me to find opportunities, reach out to them, and, and just start you know, collecting, building my database that way. Again, the goal here is to build a spreadsheet that has as many websites as possible that allow a chance of guest blogs or that they have a blog at least in case we want to do links insertions right and obviously if they have blogs they probably could use also an infographic and you can tackle different strategies that way so making sure that they allowed whether it's guest post write for us or submit an article these are the three that we use the most as, as search operators combined with the vertical as a keyword when you're searching on google for for this type of opportunities. The goal is to build a list that gives you plenty to work with so that we can start the outreach. Now, let's go into step two, which is gonna be exactly that. Step two is to contact and email outreach all these websites, all the managers, all the webmasters that are, that are in your database, on your spreadsheet or on your bus stream. Here, what we're looking for is to, one, find out if they're allowing guest blogs or content or, or link insertions as well. So hopefully within your database building, you already got the contact details of a website so that you can reach out. I highly recommend, obviously you can customize every single email, right? And you can be super expert. I know there's great channels out there about cold emailing, not discouraging to do that. You're, you know, it's up to you. It's just, it takes so many emails to be sent out for you to receive a, a yes or a no, or even just a response, that it would just be extremely extensive for you to customize every single email. So in our case, what we do is we have a very generic template. We try to keep it light and we just use the template over and over again. Yeah, I know it's probably affecting our response rate, but versus spending 10 or 20 minutes customizing each email, this way we can send a lot more and really just focus on a numbers game. Now this has worked great for us. Again, I'm speaking about through experience. That's why I'm able to recommend it to you. That's why I'm okay recommending it because we've tried it, right? It, it works great. 
Um, yes, I know that if we were to customize individual, each email going out to each website, we could probably get a little bit better response, but the time spent on it, I don't know if it's worth it, right? So just speaking through experience, we stick to templates and I can actually show you those templates as we go through here. You know, you can, you're more than welcome to pause the video or drop it in the comments if you want me to open up this document for you to, to leverage and use. There's nothing private in this template. Um, so make sure that you tweak it a little bit if you want to. Make sure that you don't send the template copy paste. There's a, a few placeholders that you want to update and change. But you know, we have subjects like request for collaboration or guest blog or link mention for your blog. And then we have the templates, right? I have two to show you today. And here's the first one. Hello, Ning, I hope you're doing well. Uh, you know, I'm reaching out and asking if you're currently accepting guest blocks or link mentions on your website name from guest contrib contributors. Uh, I've noticed that you publish excellent content in your blog. So I'm working on X, you know, X article. And I wanted to see if I could run it by you. Maybe we have a potential for collaboration. Would you want me to send over the draft to so that we can determine if it's good to fit to your audience? That's an example, right? We have a shorter one over here. Uh, same thing, trying to identify if they're still open, right? I, share, I, I changed a little bit that word. Are you still open? Like, you know, as if I knew if they were or not. Are you still open for guest blogs or link mentions on your website? Um, we do insert the website name in there so that at least it's personalized to that point. I'm currently working on an in-depth blog post on X topic. In this case, I did local SEO. And I think it could be a great addition to your content lineup. Would this, this be something that I can send you the draft for you to take a look at, right? Waiting for your response. Again, these are very, very basic templates, nothing crazy, but we place hundreds and hundreds of links every single month using these templates. So that's why it's like, I don't know, I mean, drop it in the comments if you're customizing or if you plan to customize each email that you're gonna reach out. Maybe it's smart to customize it if you're reaching out to humongous publications, right? Like very, very famous, everybody knows publication type. Other than that, this works very well if you're reaching out for industry blogs or, or mom and pop own blogs in that matter. So you're gonna be sending out hundreds and hundreds of emails to secure links every single month. This is why I said it's very tedious, very manual. And if you need help, feel free to reach out. I'll drop a link in the, in the, in the description. If you want us to just tackle this for you, you know, we do, we do link building for agencies where they just hire us and they resell the links. We do it for our clients. We do it for our own websites. So it's something that we do on a daily basis. If this is too much for you, you know, you're not alone. Uh, it, it's too much for anyone that is not really doing SEO on a daily basis. So from here, now we have the template. We're gonna start sending out emails. I mean, we're gonna go one by one, whether you, you know, depending on how aggressive you wanna be, you can just start with a Gmail account if you have one. I, I don't recommend using your company email domain uh, just because in case you start getting marked as spam or you start getting, you know, flags like that, don't work on your domain. I've also seen that it works a lot better when it comes from a Gmail account versus a company email. Like in our experience, um, both for white label, we wanna, we don't wanna say WooBound, which is my agency, uh, but also for clients, we don't wanna be related to a link building agency that does this every single day, right? We wanna be a little bit more personable. So we send our emails from Gmail accounts. Um, these are Gmail accounts that are real, right? We use them every day. So Google knows that we're, we send a lot of emails and we're not spamming. We're not doing a hundred at a time. We're actually doing one at a time in Gmail. Now there are also email outreach platforms that we use. This is again, another expense, which is gonna be up to you if you wanna try it, but it's great because they can actually auto follow up. So you can load up your, your database and then it's gonna update the placeholders on, on where it goes and it's gonna send them out slowly. And then it has automatic follow-up, right? If you don't get a response in three days, it automatically follows up. And then if not, another three days go by and sends second follow-up, right? Which if you don't have that software, you're gonna to have to do that manually because you don't wanna just reach out once. You're probably wanna to have to reach out a couple of times using your spreadsheet. I'm sure you can figure out how to take note of that, who you reached out to, who you did not. That's basically step three, right? Communication management is going to really 
take some time to get responses, follow up, following up with people, following up with webmasters, looking and seeking for that content collaboration. Now, once somebody responds and says, yes, that's when communication starts. This is where you're gonna run into some hiccups that I want you to be aware, be prepared, and give you my recommendation on what to do. So once there's somebody says yes, they're most likely also gonna give you details. So they're gonna give you their content guidelines, what they're looking for in a guest blog, or what they're looking for on, on content collaboration. They're probably going to give you pricing. This is something that throughout the years has changed. And don't be scared if a website wants to bill you, invoice you a small amount of money to publish your guest blog or your link. Uh, this is something that is very different than buying links. Buying links is like buying from a website links in bulk, right? Like I'm buying 25 links, I'm buying 50 links. In this case, there's a publication fee because these websites are monetizing different ways and this is one of them. Now, if you did your homework when you build your database and the websites that you reached out and you're securing content have been vetted by you and you know they are high quality, is probably worth to pay a small fee. Now, whatever they, the fee may be, now this is not a me, turn, we do this on a daily basis. You will run into some that are completely free. You're gonna run into some that are extremely expensive, overpriced, but whatever that number may be, they're always open to negotiate. That's something that we tend to do, especially after we place multiple links with them, we're able to either bundle them, like, hey, you know, one link is $100, how much is it if we can do three links place for three different clients or, or three links over the next three months, right? My recommendation is negotiate. S suggest a different price, a little bit lower, uh, something that you're a little bit more comfortable with. The worst they can say is no, but chances are they're gonna agree in dropping it a little bit. Maybe not meet you all the way down, but like if original price was $100, you offer 25, which is kind of low maybe they drop to 20, 75, right? And call it a day, that's a great deal. So it's some, it, that's gonna be my recommendation. Once you feel confident and, and comfortable with that price, then you can agree to move forward. You can start writing the, the, the guest blog. Um, most websites nowadays know that AI content's a thing. So if you just go with ChatGPT and get a, an article, it's probably gonna be rejected. So at least tweak it, maybe hire a content writer, maybe use another blog post creator that uses AI, but at least have a human review it. Just like if you were to publish a blog on your website, you're probably not gonna do ChatGPT copy paste. I wouldn't recommend submitting a ChatGPT copy paste for a guest blog. Again, if this website is real, humans are gonna read this article and your name's attached to it, right? So keep that in mind as you're sending this content away. Step four, you did all the work, you made it to step four, now your link is going to be placed. You heard back, your content was approved, and now you got probably a date when your content is gonna go live. Most websites have a content schedule. They're not just gonna publish it as soon as they get your article. So most chances is gonna be one, two, or three weeks out, and they will give you that live date as well. Now, by now, they probably already discussed with you pricing. Some websites will first publish an article and then invoice you later or other ones will want you to pay it first and then they'll be able to publish it later. Once the website reaches out to you and they give you the live URL, they typically have some sort of couple of day for you to review and approve it, make changes at no cost. Make sure that you do that because after one or two weeks, they're probably gonna wanna charge you if you wanna make changes. So be quick, make sure that as soon as you see the, li the link go live and they let you know, that you go out there, double check it. Um, let me know in the comments if you want me to drop another video on what to look out for once your link goes live. Because there's been a lot of times where we, we let, sometimes this is another option I didn't mention earlier. Sometimes the publication wants to write the blog and just bill us for it, which we've done in the past, right? Because I mean, you would think that it's higher quality if the website is writing their own blog. However, we've had situations where the blog is just an outline that I could tell was from ChatGPT. And luckily, clients didn't see that. We're able to fix it quick, quickly, call it out. Like, hey, this is not a blog. Like, what are you talking about? This is an outline. So 
they fix it right away by the next day's fix so we can share it with the client. So keep an eye on that, keep an eye on, on the advertising on the page, make sure there's not a lot of spam going on and that there's not a lot of spam links on the same article. Again, let me know in the comments if you want me to talk more in depth into what to look out for, happy to do that. And then last but not least, step five is monitoring and then keep an eye on the results. So really the important part of this, the goal of link building is to increase your authority, your topical authority in the industry. At the end of the day, that's gonna help you with rankings, it's gonna help with your keywords, et cetera, et cetera. So it is important for you to monitor it, right? Links are not permanent. I mean, the website may go down, you know, a month from today and you lose a link. So keep an eye on that. Sometimes a blog gets updated by the webmaster and your link was disabled, right? It's still there, the text is there, the keywords are there, but your link is not. So you can always reach out depending on what terms you discuss. Like sometimes they say, hey, we guarantee the link for one year. Or, or sometimes they say lifetime until, you know, for whatever reason we shut down the website. So make sure that you clarify that as well so that you can reach out and make sure that that link is there. My recommendation on the SEO side is monitor those rankings. I mean, start and start monitoring those keywords that you're pursuing, that you're optimizing right at the beginning of your link building campaign so that you can track week over week how that progresses. Tools used here, I mean, you can stick to your database once a live link goes live, you can add it back to your spreadsheet and every once in a while double check it, make sure that it's live, that it's still existing, that that article is still out there. There's a ton of different keyword ranking tools. Let me know in the comments if you want me to talk a lot more about keyword ranking tools that we use. Uh, you know, there's SEMrush, there's Ahrefs, SE ranking. I mean, there's so many different keyword tools depending on how aggressive or how many pages and keywords you manage and you track. Uh, but let me know in the comments if it's something that you would be interested for me to talk about. And really at the end of this entire very long, actually I don't know how long this video is, but in the long link building process, the outcome is we want traffic, we want qualified leads, we want uh, ranking improvements. In very legitimate link building campaign because you're building and placing links on real websites, sometimes we actually get traffic from those websites over because articles great, the website is great and people click on it and they come to our website and I've seen those convert, which uh, to me those, you know, sherry on top. All we wanted was the link placement, the domain authority, you know, the, the authority to, to help us as well in the industry, in the topic, but getting a few extra leads or free traffic from that article is gonna be a cherry on top. It's gonna be a great bonus that you can get. If you made it this far into this video, into this episode, um, again, it was a lengthy one, but if you made it this far, it's because you're serious about it. Hopefully give this process a try. Again, we do this on a daily basis. I have multiple link building specialists in our agency at woobound.com. If you need help, if this is overwhelming, you know you need that link building, you want to rank higher, but you just cannot handle this entire process, reach out, right? I'm gonna drop a link in the description so you can check out our services, reach out, schedule a consultation, uh, whether you need help with your entire SEO strategy or just with link building, um, reach out for either, either of those cases, all right? Well, great chatting today. Thank you so much. If you found value in this entire workshop, I'm gonna call it now, uh, hit that like button. It's gonna help us with the YouTube algorithm. Make sure that other people see it. And as we have tons of content coming up, smash that subscribe button as well. And thank you so much for tuning in to the local SEO Unlocked. Christian Hustle, keep hustling.